Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets. And to Elisha saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me what hast thou in the house? And she said unto and she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels. Thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. It came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go, tell the, go sell the oil and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God this morning. God, for this great illustration in the scripture, Father, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, that we would understand today. I pray, God, that you would help us, Lord, ourselves, God, that we would be filled with thy spirit. Lord, I pray, Father, that you'd help us, Lord, as we live in these last days. God, that we'd concentrate our thoughts and our efforts upon thee and upon the things of the Lord. God, this world's a mess, and God, only you can do something with it. And Lord, we know that you're, you're about your business. And God, we know that we're living in the last days of time, and we're trusting in you to see us through. And I pray, God, as we live and walk in these last days, Lord, you'd help us to lift our heads high. And Lord, dear Jesus, give us grace. To proclaim Christ. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Now, this portion of scripture. All right. I'm on. All right. Technical difficulties. We pause for technical difficulties. Now we resume. This portion of scripture uh, that we've read to you has uh, a great a great deal of implication. It has a great deal of knowledge and a great deal of illustration in it as we're to live our Christian lives. Now, I skipped several chapters in the life of Elisha. I don't know how long we're going to preach about him, but this is where the Lord's got us this morning. Elisha, we know Elijah, he had uh, done a lot of miracles in his day. He did eight miracles in his day that we know of. And then we know uh, he did those by the power and by the Spirit of God. Then when he went away, Elisha said, you know, uh, ask, Eli ask Elijah for a double portion of his spirit. And so he said, if you see me when I go away, then uh, you'll have that. So Elisha was there when Elijah ascended uh, on the chariot. And as he went away, Elijah dropped his mantle because he no longer needed that mantle. So he dropped that mantle. Elisha picked it up and he went right back to the last miracle that Elijah had done and he took that mantle and parted the Jordan River and he parted that river and walked through on dry ground and he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Now friend, I want you to know, he went on and then uh, you read a few more chapters or another chapter there and we find out that there were some men that mocked him and uh, he cursed them and a bear came out and tore those Young men, don't say it killed them. Maybe some of them died. But, the, but they bore the scars of mockery of that man of God. So be careful, amen, be careful about mockery in these days of God's people. So be careful of that. Don't, mark the, don't mock the people of God. It's a dangerous thing. And so they did, and Elisha, you know, Elisha uh, uh, told the Lord, and, and uh, here come the bear, and that bear tore those youngins up. Now, how old were those young? As the Bible tells us, as we uh, have studied, they were probably between 16 and 25 years old. So 
The Bible calls them children. In a lot of instances, that's what they're called. But they were, they were really just teenagers and a little older, and, and uh, that bear took them apart. So be careful. Now we come on to this lesson where uh, there's a widow woman, and we read the story to you. There's a widow woman that her husband had died, and uh, he, he, you know, I believe he, was a, he loved the Lord and he feared the Lord, and yet when he died, he left a great deal of debt uh, to his widow. And in those days, it was perfectly legal if someone was in debt and they couldn't pay the debt, that they could come and, and take those uh, sons or, or the debtor himself and take them as bond servants and th so they would serve until the debt was paid off. Well, this woman did not want that to happen. And she was, you know, she didn't want her sons to be in the, in the credit card. Telling me, you know, you're going to have to pay up or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your sons and they're going to serve as slaves until that debt is paid off or I will take them and sell them as slaves. And that was all perfectly legal in that day. And so her not wanting any of that to happen, uh, she called on the man of God. Times got rough, and, and that was someone that Elisha had known, and times got rough, and she called upon the man of God. Now, I want you to know something today. God's plan in my life and in your life is to provide for his children. Well, somewhere or the other, God knows how and can supply our needs according to his riches and glory. Now, we don't always understand how God's going to supply our needs, but you and I have faith enough to believe that God will supply our needs. And we've seen it happen too many times. You say, preacher, I'm in a mess. I don't know how I'm going to do this. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And by faith. And this little widow woman, she was at the end of her rope. And uh, she needed something. She needed something and she needed some help. And she needed it fast. This message has to do with oil. Oil in the Bible is a type of the Spirit of God. And so what this woman needed was for her oil to be filled. And that is what she knew. She didn't know that's what she needed. But that's what she needed to happen in her life. Now, friend, I'll tell you something today. Every child of God should desire to be filled with the Spirit of God the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Did you know that the early church started on the filling and indwelling of the Spirit of God? Acts chapter 4 and verse 8, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, he began to preach, filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts 9, 17, And Ananias went his way, <coughs> excuse me, and he entered to the house and put his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way, as thou camest, hast sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Now, friend, whatever you're going to do for the Lord, you're going to have to do it. If you do it and do it right, you're going to have to do it being filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, we've been scared to death of that phrase, filled with the Spirit or filled with the Holy Ghost. For years, people have been afraid of it because we've let people that, uh, you know, uh, run around with their charismatic movement and, and, and uh, make something out of it that it's not. But I'm telling you, Every believer in the house of God this morning, if you're going to do what God wants you to do, you're going to have to be filled with the Spirit of God. It's something that's available to every believer. It's something that's available to every Christian, but it requires something on our part. Now, we want revival. Do you want revival? Say amen. amen. Now, if you really want revival, friend, we're going to have to meet the requirements that God wants us to meet. We're going to have to do some things that God wants us to do, and if we as believers will commit ourselves to the Lord, and we will commit ourselves to serving Him and doing His will, then God in heaven will fill these 
vessels. He will fill us with his spirit. And we'll be able to accomplish all that God wants us to do in this life. And the only way you'll ever do it, the only way I'll ever do it is to be filled with the Spirit of God. Now the last thing the devil wants is for you to be filled with the Spirit of God. The number one thing that God wants you is to be filled with His Spirit. You think about what God has done for you in your life. Lost and undone without God and His Son, and He reached out His hand for me. I was lost without God. I had no hope. And yet Jesus gave his life that I might have life. Certainly, my friend, the least we can do in service for him is to commit our lives to him and walk with him and serve him and allow him to fill us with his spirit and direct us and guide our lives. And so this widow woman, this, story, this is both a history story and somewhat of a parable also, the story is about empty vessels. And it's a story about the, the uh, biblical feeling of God's Spirit where you and I can be filled with the Spirit of God. Now, everybody bow your head just a minute. Nobody looking around for a second. Now, you answer this question honestly. And it doesn't matter to me how you answer it. You just answer it honestly. How many folks in the building this morning can say with all your heart, Preacher, I do want my life to be filled with the Spirit of God. Will you slip up your hand? God bless you all over the building. All right, you can look up. Now, you've done the number one thing that needs to be done to having the Spirit of God rule and reign in your life. You've admitted that you want it. In order to be filled with the Spirit, you must realize that you've got a need for it. And friend, I need, I, I need the Holy Spirit of God working in my life. I cannot live without that. And I, so many times I find myself, and, and I've, I've drifted off from, uh, from the things of the Lord maybe and drifted a little way. And I understand, Lord, I don't need this. I need your Spirit controlling my life. I need the Spirit of God directing me. And you know when God's directing you, and you know when you're living of the flesh. And you do, nobody has to tell you if you're a born-again believer. No one has to tell you you strayed from God. You know that. No one has to tell you that you're not walking after the Spirit of God. That deep, small voice inside of you will tell you that you need to move closer to the Lord and be filled with the Spirit. So this little widow woman, she realized her great need. She also realized that she had nothing. All she had was a little bit of oil in a vessel. But she knew that. She, what am I going to do? I can't pay the debtor. I can't pay the creditor. I can't pay him what this debtor owes him. And all I've got left, maybe she'd sold everything else. Maybe she'd used everything else. I don't know what, what her situation was entirely, but I know she had a debt to pay. I know the creditor wanted it, and I know what she knew was she had a little bit of oil in the vessel because Elisha came and said, What do you have? She said, I have a little bit of oil in a vessel. So as she gave up the idea of being prideful, well, that's a hard pill to swallow sometimes, isn't it? your pride. But she gave up being proud and decided she was going to call upon someone to help her. A friend, you and I can't live this Christian life on our own. We've got to have some help. Amen? I can't live for the Lord on my own. The devil's too powerful for me. I'm not bold enough to stand up and tell you that I'm any kind of match for Satan because I'm not. But I thank God the Spirit of God that liveth on the inside is very well capable of handling the devil. Amen. So she admitted her need. She swallowed her pride and she called on the man of God and told her, told him all of the things that was going on. Now we're all in debt. Now she was in debt to a, a creditor uh, that she had no way of paying. But we're all in debt. We're, we're in debt because we owe to the Lord our obedience to God. Did you know that? We owe him our obedience. That we obey him that we serve him, 
that we do His will. Do you know we owe each other our love? We do. We owe each other as believers. We are indebted to each other to love one another. The worst thing we can do is speak evil of another Christian. Did you know that? Every time you get to thinking evil about another Christian, go look in the mirror and start praying for yourself. Amen? God help me. But the worst thing we can do is talk evil of another believer. We ought to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know why? It's natural for the family to love the family. It's natural for a brother to love his brother and for a sister to love her sister. And, and it's just a natural thing to do. And we owe that to each other. We're indebted to each other to love one another. I've been saying for uh, several years now, we better love each other. We're going to need each other more than ever before in these last days that we live in. We're getting there. God's people are getting more few and more far between all the time, it seems like. And we need each other. We cannot get along without each other. Love one another. Matter of fact, if I had it all to get somebody this morning, before this day's over, I'd go make it right. Amen. If I had ill feelings towards somebody, I'd go this day and make it right with them. Say, I don't need no hard feelings. I want to make sure everything's all right between me and you. Uh, maybe you've carried a grudge for years. You need to get that out of the way because you're going, you know who you're going to need? You're going to need that one person. You're going to need that one person. And, and, and uh, when you do, amen, you'll be glad everything's all right between you and them. Amen. So we owe each other our love. And then you know what? something else we're indebted to? We're indebted to this world for the gospel. We're indebted to this community around us to spread the gospel. To the Jew first and also to the Greek, the Bible tells us. This is our Jerusalem. I've said it a lot. This around here, around our church is our Jerusalem. And we owe it to this community and we owe it to the rest of the world to try our best from this little place on Gabriel's Creek to get the gospel to the lost and dying world. We owe it to them. Now we're doing a, you know, we're doing a decent job. We've got missionaries that go and we've got missionaries that, that preach the gospel. But we've got to do all we can do. Because we owe it. We've got something that the world needs more than anything else. We've got something that all these terrorists run around. We've got something that they need desperately. They need Jesus. Amen. Now I hate all this garbage going on in the world. I hate all the terrorism. I hate all these people persecuting Christians. I hate it going on. But let me tell you something. They need the Lord. They need Jesus. That would solve the problem, friend, if they come to know the Lord. You say, preacher, it ain't going to happen. Well, if one of them got saved, it'd be worth telling them about it, wouldn't it? We owe the world the gospel. Now we run on, lead on here just a little bit to this young lady and to, to this story that she has to, uh, has to tell. She needed something that only God could give her. She realized her need. Now, when this little widow woman, when she confessed her need uh, to Elisha, Elisha said, uh, what have you got in the house that we can use? Now, remember, Elisha's walking after the Spirit of God. He's asked for a double portion of the Spirit of God. And so he, he says, what, what have you got in the house that I can use it. She said, nothing, nothing except a little bit of oil there in verse number two. Listen, you say, I don't have anything that can be used of the Lord. You've got yourself, you've got your body as a living sacrifice, and you've got the oil of the Spirit of God living in you. And so Elisha said, uh, you go gather vessels. And the woman told her children, she told her children, she said, youngins, go borrow vessels. Get vessels from everybody you can find. Get all the vessels that you can find. Has anybody in here got a vessel? Hold up your vessel if you've got a vessel. Go get all the vessels. Borrow from your neighbors. Don't get just a few but borrow vessels, even empty vessels. 
<coughs> and so the young'uns went out in the community. They went out in the neighborhood and they began to gather vessels of all their neighbors. Now don't you want, don't you know that the neighbors were wondering what is wrong with her? Why does she need all these vessels? But they were loving neighbors and they began to, to take those vessels and they bring them back and they give them to Mama. Mama say, oh, look at all these vessels. I don't know what he wants with these, but, but look at all these vessels. And so they got all the vessels together. And so after they gathered all those vessels, now I do this so you won't forget what I'm trying to get across to you today. The more they gathered, the more vessels that they gathered, the better it was going to be. But Elisha didn't tell them. He didn't tell them how many to go get. Those youngins could have went out and just got one or two vessels. One or two pots. But she told them, she said, go do what the man of God says. Gather these vessels. Only gather not a few. Get all of them, even empty vessels. All you can get, get your hands on them. Did anybody hold anything back? You see any sitting in the seat around you anywhere? So we got all the vessels possible to get this morning, right? Now let me ask you something. What God wants of you is just an empty vessel. That's all he wants is an empty vessel. And so Elisha said, all right, now here's what you got to do. Us being believers, we know that we offered ourselves to God an empty vessel. We came to God when you got saved. You came to him with nothing. You came to him bankrupt in sin. You came to him without any righteousness because the Bible says your righteousness is filthy rags. You came to him as a sinner for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You came to him broken and empty just the way that you have to come if you're a believer. If you came with thinking, well, I'll do this, but I know I'm going to make it heaven because I'll, I do good works. Don't matter. Except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. No matter how good your works are, you must be born again. So these young'uns went out and they, uh, they uh, gathered the vessels together and, and they got all of them together. And this, as you and I realize and understand that the Holy Spirit of God wants to use us and wants to give us of his spirit. He wants to help us and do what he desires to do through our life. And he can do that only if we're filled with the spirit. Now what does all this mean? Well, if you're going to be filled with the spirit of God, you've got to be empty of everything else. Maybe you're full of everything else instead of empty. Maybe you're full of the world. Maybe you're full... Uh, uh, maybe you're full of self, maybe you're full of sin, maybe you're full of corruption, but as long as that is in your life, you cannot be filled with the Spirit of God. You can have the Spirit of God because He lives in you already. But to be filled with the Spirit of God, you must empty yourself, pour yourself out to the Lord and say, God, fill me with your Spirit. And then God begins to deal with your heart about things in your life and deal with your heart about sin in your life. And in order for you to enjoy Christian life, you must be filled with the Spirit. Now, don't, don't confuse this with having the Spirit of God because if you've ever been born again, you have the Spirit of God living in you. But does the Spirit of God have all of you? You've got all of God you'll ever get when the Spirit of God moved inside of you. You can't get any more saved than that. Amen. I'm just as saved as I'll ever be. But God help me that my life would be given to him that he might control me and fill me with his spirit. The Holy Spirit can only fill clean, empty vessels. The Holy Spirit can only help a loving heart that wants to be filled with the spirit of God. Friend, today are you in condition to be filled with the Spirit of God. Now this woman had to go through a process to be to do what was supposed to be done. She had to act by faith to do what was supposed to be done. And so we see that that uh, Elisha told her 
So you go in there and you shut the door and you do what I tell you to do and you fill those vessels behind closed door. Why? Because maybe they did not want the neighbors seeing and knowing what they were doing because maybe they thought that they would all try to capitalize on that. I don't know. But he said, you've got to get the door closed. You've got to get in there by yourself. And you've got, to, you've got to get your vessels filled up. You got to get where I'm going. For a child of God to be filled with the Spirit of God, we must employ the shut door in our life. We must get along with God without anybody else around us, without nobody there, without the cell phone, without the iPad, without anything else, but you and the Lord in a shut door in a closed room and say, God, please fill me with your spirit. And you deal with sin in your life. You deal with sins of the flesh. You deal with all of that until your vessel is clean, until your vessel is empty, and let God fill you with his spirit. So this little woman, she got in and she said, she said, I will do it. Whatever you said to do, I'm going to do it. So she went in there and she got the little vessel of oil that she had or the big vessel, whatever. And I'll use this one because it was dirty to start with. If I was to ever fill this up, if I fill this up to right here with water or oil or gasoline, no, I don't do that. But if I fill that whole thing up, would it be full? No, it would not be full. You know why it wouldn't be full? Because there's a piece of paper in there. There's some change in the bottom. And there's dirt in that thing. As long as all of that's in there, it can never be filled up. Because there'll always be something in there to take the place of the water. With the child of God, the only way that you and I will ever get filled with the Spirit of God, if all that junk is out of our life, if all that junk's out of our life, and I can't get all the dirt and everything out of there, but if all everything's out of our life and the dirt's out of our life, now you just pretend all the dirt's out of there, if I fill that up to here with water, is it full? Yes, it's full. But let me tell you something, friend. Without emptying ourselves, you and I can never, boy, this has hit home to me lately. Without emptying ourselves of self and of sin and of the works of the flesh and of all the garbage going on. Do you know we've got more garbage flooding our minds than we ever had before? We've got more garbage trucks running around to fill us with garbage more than we've ever had before. We've got books, we've got magazines, we've got internet, we've got iPads, we've got iPhones, we've got droids, we've got all these things that can act like garbage trucks to pass by you and dump garbage on you. Now technology, and I'll always say, I, I'm, I'm glad for technology. It can do a great work, but it can also rob you and steal you and steal from you your joy of being saved and the joy of being filled with the Spirit of God. So we got to get rid of all that. So she, she grabbed her vessel that had a little bit of oil in it I said she had a little oil, and she went around and she began to pour those, those other vessels full. And I believe she poured them right to the very top. I don't believe it spilled a drop of it because that'd be wasteful. I believe she poured them right to the very top, and she filled them all up. And she filled them all up. And every time she'd pour, she'd pour again. I believe about every time she poured one time, she'd say, oh, where'd that come from? So she ran over there as she had her, she pour another one in. Whoop! I know they want that much in that. She'd have her little, she'd have her little spell of the Holy Spirit. She'd fill up another one. I believe she got them little ones first. But then her faith began to increase. Hey, she had enough faith to pick it up and start pouring the first time. You got to give her that credit, amen. She wasn't without faith. But I believe every time she poured one, one of them little ones full and it didn't run over and she looked in there and said, they still all in there. She said, I'm going to pour another one. And she got, she finally, oh, I'm going to get this big one over here. And she poured and poured and poured. It got filled up. She poured the other one. She got them all up filled. Said, come on, youngest, give me another vessel. 
Mama, that's all of them. That's all of them. And I believe she set that first vessel down and looked in it, and it was filled. I don't have no Bible for that, but I don't believe God believed one of them half empty. Do you? So she employed the shut door. She went on, got along with her family, her children. And she said, now, Bible, we're doing this by faith, young man. So she filled all those vessels. Got all those vessels full, and after that, there was room for no more. The need was met. And the oil stayed or would no longer run out. Now what does that tell me? That tells me that God can supply our needs exactly as we need it. Now, she had all this oil. She'd been obedient, but as of yet, she didn't know what to do with it. Let me tell you something. When you become filled with the Spirit of God, you've got something to do when you're filled with the Spirit of God. You don't just sit down, but you got to do something. You know what you got to do when you're filled with the Spirit of God? Elisha well, told her, said, go pay your debtors. When you get all your debtors paid, get all your creditors paid, then you and your children live off the rest. God supplied her need and abundantly above that she asked and she was able to live on the leftovers. Now, I don't always like leftovers, but I like them kind, amen? God supplied her need and enough for her to live and her children to live because God would take care of her. Now, friend, I want you to know we've got a debt to pay we owe a debt, and the only way we can do it is to be filled with the Spirit of God. And once we're filled with the Spirit of God, we've got an obligation to go pay our debtors. How do we have this? How do we have this? We know the little widow woman, we know that she obeyed Elisha's instructions. You and I must obey the instructions of the Lord in order for us to be filled with the Spirit. We must admit our need. We must recognize what we've got. We must recognize that we need the filling of the, uh, of the empty vessel. And we must shut the door, get along with God, and say, Lord, help me, and God, show me what I need to do to be filled with the Spirit of God. Lord, help us. If we're ever going to have revival, God's people have got to start praying. We have got to start getting in our closet along with God. We have got to get together in prayer and we've got to pray, Lord, and be serious about it. Have you ever seen folks that weren't serious about prayer? Listen, some people make a grand thing of praying and yet it doesn't get anywhere because they're praying for others to hear and others to see. We need to pray to the ears of God and not to the ears of man. We must pray to the heart of God and not to the ears and the heart of man. We must be that, in that place where we can converse with God behind the shut door and let him fill us with his spirit. If we're ever going to have revival, we must be filled with the spirit of God. If we're going to be filled with the spirit of God, we must be emptied ourselves and let God in heaven work a work in our lives. Now the question is asked, are you willing to do that? We know it. It's, it's a fact. We know what we need. But are we willing to do what's necessary? Or do we want to go on in life and say, well, I'll just keep going like I'm going. Maybe God will bless me anyway. Listen, you know what to do. You're held accountable. If you know what to do and you don't do it, we're held accountable for that. Is it, your, is it your desire for revival? Is it your desire to be filled with the Spirit of God? Or do you want to go on the way things are going? Church, I'm asking you a question, a broad question to the church. Do you want to go on as you say, well, preacher, we're doing good. We are doing good. Amen. Hallelujah. God's blessing us and God's here. 
But listen, the more I get, the more I want. Amen? The more of God's blessings I receive, amen, makes me hungry for more of the blessings of God. The more of the Spirit of God we feel, the more we want to feel the Spirit of God. Church, we need revival. Young people, let me tell you, we got, we got several young folks in the church. I want to tell you, you adults can stop up your ears right now if you want to, because I'm going to talk to these young in just a minute. All you little ones, stand up, and you teenagers, stand up. Now, adults, you look around at these kids, these young ones. You know what this is? This is our church of tomorrow. Now, I tell every one of you, I love you. I love you, young ones. I love every one of you. I love you from right down in here. And if there's one of you that's not saved, I pray God in heaven to get a hold of your heart and convict you of sin and show you that you need to be saved so you can go to heaven. But church, this is our tomorrow. If we don't raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, if we don't let them see the feeling of the Spirit of, of God in our hearts and our lives, they're going to grow up not knowing what it is. Y'all be seated. I love you. Love every one of you. If you ever need this preacher, you call me anytime. I'll come. I walk through fire for you, but I want you to grow up and serve the Lord. I want you to be obedient and walk after the Spirit of God. I want you to know the joy that I felt from a teenager on of being filled with the Spirit of God. But so many young people are growing up today not knowing what it is because they don't have any, they don't have any examples in their life to show them what it is to be filled with the Spirit. Some of you looking at me like a calf looking at a new gate. I want to tell you something. Friend, the Spirit of God is the best place, the best thing that ever happened in your life is being controlled by God's Spirit. And you young folks, you're at an age right now where, where you can search your heart and where you can begin to talk to the Lord about it and say, God, I want that kind of life. Those students that got killed here, I'm told, I don't know all of this for a fact, but I, I've been told and listened to the news and by others that they, the gunman said, now this ain't the gun's fault. That bun, you, you, I ain't even going to start there. It had to have somebody behind it to pull the trigger. It ain't the gun's fault. People full of the devil and full of hell are going to kill people. I'll just tell you. But you and me are not going to unless we, unless it was a dire need and I was protecting one of you or my family. But that gunman walked up to the first one and said, are you a Christian? That one said, yes. Boom. Now, I don't know the proximity where they were all at, but they were all together. Went to the next one, and I heard that that one heard the first one say, yes, she was a Christian. And they asked that one, are you a Christian? Without hesitation, that one said, yes. Shot. Don't you know the rest of them that got killed knew the same thing? But they were willing because they would not deny Christ. Would you be, would you be willing to do that? By the power of God and by the help of God and by the grace of God, I believe we would. But it would only be by God's grace. Friend, you need the feeling of the Spirit of God. You need to walk after the Spirit. I'm telling you, we need it in these last days. If you're halfway living for God and you, you know, you're going about your daily life saying, oh, well, I'll do the best I can and I'll live with the world and I'll keep one foot over here in the world and I'll keep one foot over here with God and whichever one's pulling the hardest that day, I'll go that way. That's the way a lot of people live. Listen, it ought to be in my life and your life that we want to get right in the center of the will of God and say, God, help me. Lord, help me to live after your Spirit every day. Church, what is it with you? You owe it to the, hey, adults. Hello, adult people. Listen to me. You owe it to these youngins. If, you, if you're a mom or a dad, you owe it to these youngins to be faithful to God, to be faithful to church, and let them witness a life in you that's filled with the Spirit of God. It's your job. It's your duty. I raised my kids in church. I brought them up in church. They didn't miss a service. 
they turned out pretty good, amen? But listen, whether they do or not, it isn't your responsibility if you've done your job. But you've got to raise him. You've got to raise him in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You've got as a parent, you've got a great responsibility. Do I raise them for the Lord or do I let them go their own way? You let them go their own way and they'll go the way of the world. And you'll be asking prayer from the church someday about the way your youngest is living. Now we'll pray for them. I'm glad to do it. If you've raised them right, hey amen, we're, we're glad to pray. If you're not raised them right, we're still glad to pray. But I'd rather be praying for you youngest to win souls than I would for them to get right with God. Amen. Amen. Are you filled with the Spirit? Do you want to be filled with the Spirit? Or do you want to continue on walking? Half-hearted or all in? Which is it, friend? Are you half-hearted or are you all in? Are you halfway or are you all in? There are certain things in life that I'm halfway at. I'll just be honest with you. I'll take a share of halfway. Th- no, I'm kidding. <laughs> when I take a share, I'm all in. Amen. Soap everywhere. When it comes to going out and going deer hunting, I'm all in. Bring it on. I'll shoot the gun. I'm not afraid to shoot the gun. I may miss, but I'm going to shoot. I'm all in. But there's some things that I just don't, yeah, take it or leave it. Some sports I can take or leave. Most of the time when food comes around, I'm all in. There's a few things I just don't care for. Just a few things I don't care for. I have to stop and think about it, but there's a few things I don't care for. But I'm all in when it comes to some things. But some things, Brother Max, some things I just don't. You know, I just don't care for it. I mean, just don't, just don't care to do it. Yeah. But when it comes to the things of God, you got, you're either way. You're either all in or you're halfway or you're out. I'd rather be out or just be halfway. Somebody, have you, I'm going to quit here in a minute. When I get through, when the Lord gets through, I'm going to quit. But let me tell you something. Have you ever been around somebody playing ball? I used to watch my youngest play ball. And, and uh, some of them would, you know, some of them could, could do good, but they just wouldn't do it. Basketball especially. They'd... Somebody steal a ball for them. I knew they was better than that, but they weren't paying no attention. They just halfway playing that. Their, their mind was on that little gal they were seeing or, or something else that was going on. They was halfway at it. But I'd see one buddy, they's all in. I mean, you, you get this ball. This is my ball, and you ain't taking it from me. No matter what you do, this is my ball. And they wouldn't nobody take that ball. Well, you know why? They were all in. Let me ask you something today. Are you all in or are you halfway? You're either one, you're one of the two. So you ask yourself this question right now. Am I all in? Or am I just, you know. You're in and you're out. You're hot or you cold. God don't want it lukewarm. How is it with you and the Lord? How is it with you and being filled with the Spirit of God? command of God to be not drunk with wine, where is it says, but be filled with the Spirit of God. Are you filled with the Spirit? Father, Lord, we thank you for the Word of God this morning. Lord, I thank you for your divine help. I pray right now, God, that you'd help us to search our heart. And Lord, if there's one here that don't know you, that's lost without God, Lord, would you touch that heart? Lord, maybe somebody here that maybe made a profession sometime or the other, but they, they didn't really get in. They thought they did, but they didn't really get in, and they have no desire for the things of God. I pray that you'd help them, God, to come to know thee today. There's someone here, Father, that's just lost, and God knows they're lost. God, please, Lord, show them they're lost again and convict them of their sins and show them they don't have to go to hell. God, if there's believers here this morning just in the halfway in, Father, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to get in all the way. Lord, get get into the deep water so we can have revival and be stirred of thee. We thank you in Jesus' name.
while every head's bowed, no one looking around.